Welcome to the first installment of Master the Page. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to begin this series of installments or episodes called Master the Page with 1 Peter chapter 1. We're obviously going to be starting with verse 1. This is going to be a methodical verse-by-verse expositional study through the Bible. And we're beginning, obviously, with 1 Peter, but we're going to be looking at other books, hopefully, after we conclude our study here. Uh, Before I get started, I I will tell you, since this is the first episode, uh, how this is going to work. What you're looking at right now is the screen of my iPad. And I have a stylus for that iPad, a pen, if you will, for the iPad. And I'm going to use that to make marks on the text, under the text, make notes. I'm going to circle words, all so that you can see my work as I progress through the verse. And uh, that is to help you in your study. I'll jot scripture references down. Uh, I'll make lists and things of that nature, and you'll be able to see all of that here. So hopefully this will be a good tool, a a useful tool for you as you uh, engage family worship uh, at home. And uh, and that's what that's really what this is for, is to in, encourage uh, family worship and and Bible study uh, between you and your spouse and 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 your children as well. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our text. We're going to be looking first at these at these first few words here, and this is Peter's letter. Obviously, it begins with that information, Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, let's stop right there. This letter is authored by Peter, and we know who Peter is without even uh, looking at this verse. Everyone is familiar with who the apostle Peter is, yet in the first century, not everyone was familiar with the identities of the apostles, and so it was customary for them to introduce themselves as follows, as we see here in this text. But we need to make note that there were, there were thousands upon thousands of apostles in the first century, and there are still apostles today. And you might be scratching your head thinking, well, I thought there were only 12 apostles. Well, yes, there are only 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. The word apostle really only means sent one. And so when we're talking about apostles, we're talking about messengers, people who are sent out by kings, um, by other kind of political authorities to to bear a message to uh, another king or another political authority. And so all apostle means is sent one messenger. In that sense, even the person, uh, a missionary, is a is an apostle of sorts. We we send missionaries to different countries to preach and teach the gospel to. Uh, indigenous peoples and, and peoples who are who are very far away from us in some instances. And so they are apostles. Now, what is it that sets the 12 apostles, uh, of which Peter is a part, uh, what is it that sets those apostles apart from just any other sent one or any other messenger? Uh, and that is what we find here. At least we, we, we get a summary of it here. And that is that These apostles, Peter, uh, Paul, um, you might think of John, right? Uh, Bartholomew, uh, all of those men are, are apostles of Jesus Christ. So they're not just any apostle. Uh, they're not just any group of messengers or, uh, sent ones, from any king or just any political authority. These are apostles or messengers sent from Jesus Christ himself. And in fact, one of the marks of true apostleship is that the apostle has been sent of Jesus Christ. And we see the word of there. They're of Christ, okay? And and not only are is this a claim right? Uh, Just an empty claim that someone can make. Well, yeah, I was sent by Jesus Christ. He came to me in a dream last night 
and I, I'm an apostle now, or I have this feeling that Jesus sent me as an apostle. No, that's not quite how apostleship works. Uh, to be an apostle, one had to be sent directly from Jesus Christ. One had to be chosen from Christ, or uh, Christ had to choose them. So apostles were chosen by Christ himself. And it, we don't ever see a, an example in the scriptures of someone coming to apostleship or becoming an apostle simply on the basis of some intuition or some feeling or some secret revelation they they receive themselves and no one else. Um, even Paul, who was as one untimely born, who was kind of chosen as an apostle later, uh, was chosen by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus uh, appeared to him, and not to him only. He actually appeared to someone else. He appeared to Ananias as well. And so there were, there were various ways in which Paul's apostleship could be confirmed uh, by the other apostles. There was a witness, um, and obviously uh, Paul uh, conducted himself as an apostle and performed signs and things of that nature, which confirmed that God indeed was working through him in a very special way. So there are other marks of being an apostle, one of which is uh, seeing the risen Christ. Uh, to be an apostle, you had to be a witness of the risen Christ. Um, and there, there are other marks that we could draw out that, that, uh, that tell us what, uh, whether or not someone is apostle, an apostle. Uh, this whole um, habit that some have today of thinking of themselves as apostles, and you hear a lot about this when you, when you study the cults, is that there is uh, or there are apostles that uh, run these cults and, and they're self-proclaimed apostles. But really, they don't meet any of the marks required in order to be considered an apostle of Jesus Christ. They fall short of nearly every biblical mark uh, that, uh, the, uh, that, a, that a true apostle would, would indeed bear um, biblically. So it's Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. He's not just any apostle. He's not just any messenger. He is of Jesus Christ. And, and another reason that that's significant is we know uh, from our study in theology and from elsewhere in the scriptures, we think of uh, maybe John 1, 1 through 3. Um, we know that Jesus Christ is the eternal word, God, right? He is God who took unto himself the fullness of a human nature. He became like us in every way. He was tempted like us in every way, yet without sin. And so there's a significance to being an apostle of Jesus Christ, because what, what Peter's saying here is that he's, he's not only a messenger of a man or of a human king, he is a messenger of a divine king, um, and that divine king is the Lord Jesus. This is the king of kings, and Lord of Lords that Peter is claiming to be sent from, uh, an apostle of, right? So there is are several uh, elements of significance just here in these first few words that we could probably preach a whole sermon on. And then it goes on uh, to address his audience. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, that's his introduction to, right? We see that word to there, and he's getting ready to address his letter to his audience. And he says, to those who reside as aliens. Now, I want you to notice that word aliens. It's going to be a theme that is uh, brought up elsewhere here in the first chapter of, of Peter, indeed in his introduction, as he goes on, verse two, three, and so on. And uh, the, the word alien here. Uh, doesn't refer to uh, people from outer space or anything like that. This is uh, a, a kind of a, a word that's often used to describe, uh, we've used it even uh, in, recent, um, in recent times to describe immigrants, right? People who come over to our country, um, and we refer to them as aliens, and that's because they're not from here, 
right? This is not their land, um, especially in the case of someone who leaves for a time only to come and visit. Maybe they're on a work visa or whatever. They might be referred to as aliens, and that's because this is they are alien to this land. This is not their land originally. They are from somewhere else, be it Canada or Mexico or Cuba or South America or uh, the Middle East or Europe, name any, any place in the world. If they're not from our country, the United States, they are considered aliens. They're from another country, right? And so, uh, but, but in this sense, we're talking about aliens, um, uh, people who are not of this world, Right, we we've seen the the term or the phrase uh, in scripture everywhere um, that says, you know, we are not of this world or not to be of this world. And the idea here is that you know Peter's audience are pilgrims; they don't belong here; uh, they're only visiting if you will. They're only here for a season, and uh, they have been born again uh, as true, genuine Christians, uh, and they now belong to God in Christ. They've been adopted, we might say. They've been adopted into a divine family, right, so that uh, they no longer they no longer belong to this world. They've been pulled out of this world through regeneration and made a part of a different family, a divine family. They've been made citizens of a heavenly country. Uh, that's the language that uh, is used in Hebrews 11, and we might be able to make note of that over here. So we might look at Hebrews 11, which is often called the Hall of Faith. And we understand that those who are part of that hall of faith um, were not looking toward an earthly country or for an earthly country. They were looking for a heavenly country. Uh, and we see that theme developed uh, from Hebrews 11 to Hebrews 12. And um, so these are aliens Peter is writing to. By aliens, he means citizens of another country not here in this world. They're citizens of heaven. They're citizens of of heaven who have been purchased by the blood of Christ. Um, interestingly, uh, he then goes on to use the language they've been scattered throughout, right? These are, uh, so this is probably a circulatory letter. This is not a letter intended for any one church. This is a letter meant to be sent to a church, and then that church sends it on to another church, and then so on and so forth. And we even see that here as uh, Peter lists out uh, these different locations uh, where Christians are, uh, and he's writing to all those Christians, Christians who live in Pontus, Galatia. And we see Paul write to the Galatians, right? So Paul also writes to Galatia, or the churches in Galatia, Cappadocia, and Asia, which uh, the Asia he's talking about there is not... China and Japan and the Koreas or anything like that. He's talking about Asia Minor, where modern day Turkey is, uh, and kind of in that region there. And also in Bithynia. And then he ends the verse by describing who these people are. In other words, he, uh, he identifies them as those who are chosen. They are chosen. So we have Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, writing to aliens, that is, uh, citizens of another country that don't belong here. They ultimately will rejoin their people in glory. Uh, they are Christians. They are, uh, they, they are looking to a heavenly country, Hebrews 11 says. And uh, these people are chosen. And the word there for chosen is... Uh, the word from which we get the word elect. So these are chosen people. Uh, the Greek word is eklegomai, and uh, they, are, they are chosen. Now, they're not chosen by Peter. They're not chosen by uh, themselves. They are chosen by God, 
okay and we will we will develop that uh, idea of election as we move through this epistle that Peter writes meant to be circulated throughout Pontus Galatia Cappadocia Asia and Bithynia and indeed in God's providence is also meant for us so thank you again for joining this first installment of Master the Page. I look forward to continuing our study along with you. God bless.